A new theory surfaced this week in the case of the Idaho student murders that I find incredibly interesting. It's about probably the single most important piece of evidence in the case, a knife sheath discovered at the crime scene, which allegedly has suspect Brian Koberger's DNA on it. The theory is one I, I just hadn't even considered that might have been intentionally left there by Koberger to throw off investigators. The knife sheath looked like this, both with USMC imprinted on it, along with the US Marine Corps Eagle Globe and Anchor insignia. This theory comes from a number of people, but most recently from criminal profiler John Kelly. And it goes like this, that Koberger left the sheath on purpose and that the military references were no accident, that they were a ploy to send investigators on a hunt for someone else, someone in the military perhaps, someone other than Koberger. To further this claim, Kelly calls this staging 101, perhaps a ruse learned from Koberger's doctoral studies in criminal justice. Kelly claims a, a normal reaction for someone who had just used a knife would be to return it to its sheath. And the DNA found may have just been an oversight. It's a theory also suggested by British criminology professor David Wilson. That seems to be a remarkably clumsy move. Or a remarkably clever move, because one of the things that's really struck me about the person that's been arrested and accused of this is he, he is intelligent and high functioning. So would a highly skilled, intelligent um, student who was teaching criminology, a PhD student, have made such a basic yeah, error? Well, look, the guy was clearly not the brightest criminal. We know that. But according to the criminal affidavit, the tan leather knife sheath was discovered laying on the bed next to Madison Mojum's right side. The Idaho State Lab later located a single source of male DNA left on the button snap. The knife itself is missing. And with Koberger said to be an obsessive compulsive with other things like food, one imagines cleanliness in general, it's likely he hid the knife somewhere else after committing the murders, someplace where the blood wouldn't contaminate his clothes. They linked the knife to Koberger through the DNA recovered from trash at his family's home in Pennsylvania. So let's talk this through with Jesse Weber, anchor and host on the Law and Crime Network, who has been closely following the story. Jesse, what do you make of the theory? I think it makes no sense. Come all on. due respect, no sense, and I'll explain why. First of all, this K-Bar USMC knife, I can go on Amazon right now, I can go on kbar.com right now, I could buy it. This is not something that is exclusive to the military, and without any other evidence left there pointing to a member of the military, it makes no sense that he would think, or whoever the suspect is, that the police would immediately think military. And top of all this, the biggest point, I'm going to take the risk of leaving a piece of evidence that might have my DNA on it, and we all saw that it possibly does, with the idea of maybe the police are going to look at somebody else. I, it makes absolutely, absolutely no sense. And if this really was the motivation, one of the dumbest things I've ever thought. Well, yeah, and, and we know that he made other you know, mistakes. But the, the argument goes that he thought he had cleaned the sheath. He thought he had a sort of left a pristine piece of evidence, but he missed the sort of the snap, right? He missed that one spot where his DNA was located. It, it, no, uh, what this seems to me is any case I've covered where someone has left evidence at a crime scene, it's a, it's a slip up, it's a mistake. So people might say, oh, he's so intelligent. You know, how did he not plan for this? If we have no indication Brian Koberger ever did anything like this before, when someone is in the heat of a crime, they're not thinking logically. They could have been in a panic. They could have been afraid. We know that one of the surviving roommates said that he, the suspect walked right past her. A lot of people have been wondering why. If you are in a state of shock after committing this crime, you can't explain everything why they do something or not do something. And, and to, to support your point, which is pretty persuasive, I'm really getting tired of people talking about how smart this guy is, yeah. right? As if he was like the ultimate criminal mastermind who would never have... I mean, he made so many mistakes and so many slip-ups, this idea that, oh, you know, no way he would ever... Right? I mean... They're giving him too much credit. And can we also just address the idea of, well, he's a criminology student, right? right? So I've taken criminology before. I've spoken to criminologists about this. They don't teach you how to commit the perfect crime. They teach you how to understand why crimes are committed. <laughs> Jesse Weber... <laughs> Thank you very much yeah, for coming on the you. show. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.